question that nobody is asking, and yet I'm still going to answer it. Which is the superior marker? These results probably won't surprise you. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry for my uh, recent absence. Uh, I've been a, quite a bit busy with something. But anyways, today I am comparing Copic markers versus Crayola markers. Now this is definitely not an original idea. A lot of people on YouTube do these sort of comparison videos and I really, really like them and I really wanted to do this one. This one's actually been on my list of ideas for quite a while. I've wanted to color the same illustration with Copics uh, as well as Crayola markers. Now this lovely line art here, I have to admit I did not draw. This line art was drawn by a very good friend of mine, Katie Vaughan Art. Now if you're interested in her line arts, actually she does have a whole bunch of them on her Patreon and you should definitely go check that out. So I will leave a link in the description and yeah. So this is a mouse that she has obviously drawn uh, in the style of Rapunzel and I really wanted to pick this artwork in specific to draw because I don't know I just really really like it. I love the sort of uh, wavy hair and just the whole piece is very very cute and definitely right up my alley so yeah. Now, when comparing two different uh, art supplies together, I usually do prefer to sort of swatch them out a little bit just to sort of compare them. But I have actually used Copics quite a lot and uh, I have actually used these uh, Crayola markers before. So I really didn't want to swatch them again because I have done that already and I didn't want to waste any time. So straight off the bat, I noticed that both of these markers are very, very beautiful and vibrant to use. Uh, the Crayola markers are very vibrant, uh, definitely, definitely really colorful for uh, the price that you pay. However, there is a little bit of an issue with them. Pretty much all of the colors that you get in the Crayola marker uh, variety, they are all so vibrant and so colorful and a lot of the time you won't really find a lot of sort of softer or duller colors and I actually prefer to have a mix of vibrant and soft colors because you can end up drawing things uh, and it ends up looking a bit better because you don't want every single color to be super super saturated and super super bright because when that happens usually they start to sort of fight each other if that makes sense uh, they are so colorful that uh, all of the colors together are sort of fighting to stand out the most and a lot of the time I prefer to have a few uh, colors that are the brightest and then have a few mix of uh, sort of less saturated colors so that it has a bit more uh, balance if that makes sense. Now I know it is probably a bit of an unfair comparison because Copic Market actually has a whole large range of colors 358 I think that's definitely a lot more colors than Crayola has and uh, that's probably why you can end up getting sort of softer colors and some brighter colors as well with the Copics but to be honest that's just what's available and I still think that I should count that because well Copic have more of a variety and that's definitely a big win for Copic against Crayola. That being said, the colors that you do get in Crayola are very beautiful and I love the sort of really bright yellows that you can get. Uh, the purples aren't as bright as uh, other purples are, but to be honest, uh, that is a kind of hard color to get sometimes. So I'm not gonna knock Crayola for that. Another thing I am going to mention is that uh, this line art here I did print onto marker paper. So that's the paper I'm using today, my Expressa blending card. And I had a little bit of an issue with the Crayola marker. Uh, I actually didn't think about it, but at the moment it does make sense. Uh, the printer ink sort of smudges a tiny bit with the Crayola markers, but that makes sense because these are water-based and Copics are 
uh, alcohol base. So yeah, that definitely makes sense. I should probably look into some waterproof uh, inks, but to be honest, I really didn't think about that. So if you are using Crayola markers, definitely test which inks you are going to be using them with because they can smudge it a little bit. Now this is pretty minimal, but you can definitely see in the face and on the leaves of the artwork as well. But I'm not gonna hold that over them because Crayola markers are quite affordable and yeah, they are, they're pretty good for the price, I think. That's another thing I want to mention actually. Copic markers are so expensive and I'm not going to pretend like they aren't because they definitely are and not every artist can afford them. But if you really want a good affordable uh, cheap marker just to use, Crayola are definitely a good way to go uh, compared to other sort of brands for the price range. The colors are really nice and it does lay on pretty well for a water-based marker. Now going back to the art that is uh, displayed on the screen at the moment, um, I definitely want to mention uh, that there are some key differences between the coloring uh, on the left hand side versus the right hand side. As you can see on the Crayola marker side, uh, the colors of the mouse's fur are very, very saturated and uh, pretty bright. And I couldn't really get a softer sort of light brown like I really wanted. Um, the sort of uh, beige color was a lot more orangey than it shown on the cap and I'm going to mention this because the caps aren't as accurate as the Copics are but uh, I ended up fixing that up with a little bit of water which I really didn't want to do but be but because these markers are washable and water-based uh, you can sort of lift some of the color a little bit and use it almost like a watercolor now I definitely want to try that in uh, the future using Crayola markers like watercolor but I didn't want to do that today because this is a bit more of a marker comparison video another noticeable difference that I want to mention is that I didn't have a lot of ranges of light gray colors I actually only had one gray marker but I really didn't want to make the uh, stone bricks on the outside of the castle to be really dark so I ended up just going in with a bit of a speckly pointillism sort of texture and that ended up making it look pretty close to the other one but you can definitely tell that I was a bit limited. Now I'm not trying to bash Crayola too much in this video even though it feels like I really am. I'm just sort of comparing them to Copic markers which understandably they are going to be uh, a bit less quality however I really do enjoy the, using them and I really like them and I think they're quite fun to use once you get around those sort of uh, barriers. Now at the end of the illustration, I did want to use some gel pen over the top. Now this was mainly to test the compatibility of a gel pen with the markers because I will always use a bit of gel pen in my marker illustrations. So I really wanted to test to see how well the Crayola uh, markers sort of interacted with the gel pen uh, versus the Copic. And I was quite surprised actually, it worked pretty well. Sometimes when I'm using markers, the gel pen can sort of mix with the ink and sort of turn a very slight shade color of the ink underneath. But that didn't happen too much with the Crayola markers. So I'm quite glad of that. So here are the final results of both illustrations and I have to say I do enjoy both of them and I enjoyed uh, coloring in both of them. They were definitely a lot of fun to do. Of course the Copic is going to stand out in front because well you do get what you pay for. However the Crayola is a great marker at an affordable price. So for people who uh, can't afford expensive markers definitely try them out and see for yourself so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video please hit like and subscribe and i'll see you in my next one bye mm -hmm.